Dr. Hannah Cho here again. Excuse the background. We obviously have a lot still to unpack at this point. I can't even stop staring at the mess. We're in the process of still moving in and settling in. Hopefully you'll be done by this week. And today is what? Is today Friday already? I don't think. Is today Friday? Today's either Thursday or Friday. Everything is such a haze lately. Since last time, we went bike riding um, for the first time a few days ago. It was so nice. The pathways are all flat here. It's so easy for us to just take our bikes, which are parked in front, take the kids and just go. So we biked every day so far around four o'clock. And what we're noticing is sunset goes down a lot earlier nowadays. So we're trying to go earlier. So actually we're gonna probably go out soon. So we also saw some fields, athletic fields. And yeah, it was really nice just biking everywhere. I think that's something that we have to keep in mind though, because I had my student ID pickup yesterday and I was gonna bike there. I thought I'd be so cold biking there and I realized you can't get there the same time you would if you had driven. So I ended up having to drive anyways. I have to somehow reset my thinking because I always think of uh, how long does it take to drive when I map it, right? So this time I have to push that bicycle icon. But got my ID, super excited. Um, I texted it right away to Nate and he's super excited as well. I actually got him a courtesy card. He has access to dining halls, the gym if it does open, and laundry and housing and stuff like that. Now I technically have the Stanford key to get into different places. And again, we've been eating. Actually, so um, I don't know if you guys remember, but I bought some groceries from Costco and so we're still finishing that up. And we are actually almost done with most of it except this huge carton of eggs, which actually we could probably finish within the next few days anyways as snacks. Yesterday we went to the dining hall again. And again, I was so excited. I forgot to take footage inside. I'll try to remember next time. It's just so every time I step inside the dining hall, I get so excited and you're in this like mindset of trying to get as much as you can and everything just smells so good. And for me, my weakness definitely is sweets. And so whenever I see free sweets, it's really hard for me to pass up. But being the responsible mom that I am, I tried to act like I wasn't interested in them. But when the girls were looking, I just kind of stuffed it into their bags. So <laughs> the dining halls are amazing. I don't have to cook. That's really the best part, like I said before. More business related. Uh, the past few days, I attended a few Zoom meetings. One was yesterday and it was with his son. And it's more geared towards Asian Americans that work in large corporations. Their thing is trying to equip Asian Americans with the skill sets to be able to break through that bamboo ceiling. I don't know if you guys heard of that term, but similar to a glass ceiling, except it's made out of bamboo for us Asians. It was a very cool conference. We had a couple really amazing and inspiring women speakers. One of them was a very famous journalist and a newscaster. She went through a lot and it sounded like she achieved a lot as well. And my key takeaway from her was one of the questions the audience asked, what's your best tip basically as a journalist or an interviewer? And she said, you need to listen to what people are saying. Don't be so quick to respond, let them speak. And if they don't answer or it sounds like they're still fumbling through their thoughts, let them have time to think and speak. She said to have like a pregnant pause, which I thought was very memorable. And the other one was, she actually went through a lot. She was legal counsel for Sony Universal and she went through a lot of hardships. And for her, it was basically, uh, you never feel just keep trying and but she's the type that whenever she got an opportunity she just took it and for her she had to make some hard choices and that's kind of where she ended up where she was at when I asked her if she regretted or wondered what if if she had taken the other road she answered well not really because for me at that time it was the right choice and I feel like that's kind of what it is for everybody you guys make choices every day and it gets you to where you are today and I and a strong believer that everything happens for a reason. So that was what I learned from there. And then for, we actually had, I think it was called Career Pathways to Success for the MXX alumni. We listened to recent grads and seeing where, what kind of words of wisdom they had for us. There was a lot, and I think it's too specific for our cohort, so I won't share them, but if I had to sum it up into one sentence, it's 
don't be scared to fail. Just go all in to whatever it is you're interested in so you can fail fast. And I've heard that before, but when I hear real life stories kind of adding color to that statement, it made me listen more carefully. For me, I'm already in the pathway of the business journey that I want to go. So I'm lucky there. Like I already know what my passion is and what I really enjoy doing. And I already know what my skill sets are suited for. I think for others, because they don't know exactly what they want to do, they should venture into it, go all in basically and fail fast if that's not the right calling for them and pivot. I don't know if that's applicable to any of you guys. Just trying to find what you enjoy doing and what comes naturally to you and trying to apply that strength to whatever job position ends up being the right fit for you. So I thought that was very interesting. Oh, I got some of my equipment, my workout equipment. We had a home gym in my parents' condo while we were there temporarily. And they had this set of kettlebell, kettlebells, I think that's what they're called. And I really liked them and I would work out with them every day. And I didn't, for some reason, I didn't think that you can purchase them. It seemed like a professional equipment that you can only find at the gym. But I actually found them on Amazon, so I bought them. I'm so excited to work out with them. I worked out with them with my youngest daughter, Katie, yesterday. And it was so fun. Um, it's actually right here. So we have a set of three of these going all the way to 15 pounds. And you can probably see this. This is like upside down hanger thing that Nate does to stretch out his back because he's sitting in the computer all day, which kind of reminded me to straighten my posture. So we are nearing the end of our 10 day quarantine. Oh, I can't even believe I forgot about this part. So I got my first cotton swab nose test this morning and I saw this video clip or like a diaphragm diagram of what actually happens how far in the nose the cotton swab goes and it freaked me out. I was so scared and anxious about the screening this morning and the whole time there I was dreading each step going closer and I there was no line luckily but you know that feeling you're waiting for something bad to happen? I love roller coasters, but this is probably what like people who don't like roller coasters may feel. You're waiting and it's like going towards getting onto that roller coaster. So that was it for me and actually it was fine. It was not hard at all. They had you take the Q-tip and put it in your own nose and you swirled it around <laughs> 10 times uh, per nostril, which she told me was go in as go in until there's resistance. And I thought, but actually it's, yeah, there's resistance kind of quick. I don't know if I I just like kind of didn't go in all the way but in that diagram oh my goodness it was so that's just my rational fear so actually went well and I'm actually okay getting that done because we have to get tested twice a week when school starts other than that I am going to be meeting one of my cohort cohort classmates classmates soon and we're going to go for a walk which i'm super excited about i just love the idea of being able to go outdoors and just hang out walk bike it's not very accessible for us where we were at prior to moving here which was in koreatown in los angeles which is right next to downtown and um the one time we did go for a walk it was not nighttime but you know when the, because the sun has been setting earlier it was around maybe six o'clock and oh my goodness we walked with our girls and we had this lady like yelling profanity at me and my daughters and it was terrible uh, just changing the scenery where we do feel safer and we're able to do active stuff without having someone yell at us is just peace of mind updates on the practice one exciting thing is one of our practices which is artesia is moving forward so we will be opening probably earlier than costa mesa which is amazing just got the call yesterday costa mesa is right on track we're super excited for what's going to happen with that you know when everything kind of comes together it doesn't happen often but there's always like those really good days that just keeps getting better as the day goes on i felt like that was how it was for me the past day and also today so it's been really really good i'll keep you guys posted and like always i'll talk to you guys next time bye